Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another brand new episode of the Collider Games Podcast. My name's Destin. I'm in studio with... What's up, guys? It's your boy, Dorian. And through the magic of Skype, we've got Caboose. Caboose, how you doing? Doing really good. Yesterday was a huge day, and today I'm sure is just as big, and we'll, we'll, we'll get into that, I'm sure. I'm yeah, sure. yeah, if, if people know, I mean, they should know. It's uh, Avengers Endgame Day. Yes. Um... I'm well, always a big fan of supporting indie movies. So, yeah, indie you know. movies. <laughs> so uh, the indie, low budget, all that stuff. We will actually be talking about that on one of the the top topics today. It's connected to uh, a video game, Fortnite specifically. But let's get right. on. This week there was two large games that came out. Um, yeah. I unfortunately did not get to play them, but you two did. Yes, sir. Both mm-hmm. Mortal Kombat 11 and Days Gone By. Mortal Kombat 11 came out first, right? That came out on Tuesday or Wednesday? Tuesday. Yeah, m- yeah. Mortal Kombat 11 was on Tuesday the 23rd. Okay, and then what day did Days Gone By come out? Thursday. Um, Doesn't it come out today? Days, days today? Gone, I think, is out today. Yeah, yeah it comes out today. Okay. Embargo lifted yesterday. Cool. Okay, cool. So let's start with Mortal Kombat. This is something we've been talking about for a while. I know you two guys are like super fans of this. I listened to Caboose's review. I mm-hmm. don't know what Dorian's impressions are yet. So let's let's start off with Dorian. Dorian, what what's your initial impression so far? How and how many hours have you gotten into Mortal Kombat 11? Initial impression so far, love it. And okay. the thing uh, hour-wise, I want to say Caboose, I don't know like if you timed out like how long it takes for the story mode itself, but that's about how much I played uh with a little okay. bit about like a about 2 or 3 hours worth of like online play and stuff like that outside, but the main uh, I don't know Caboose, would you say 12? I don't know. How the many story mode? Yeah, just the, the story, story mode. mode. So from what I mapped out and what I timed out and based on what I'm hearing from everyone else, it's about like give or take five hours. Okay, so like story. I played that like for the past few days, like playing just the, the story mode itself. And I mm-hmm. loved it. Like just the, the story itself because I, it, it's pe- taking place like right out or taking following MKX and mm-hmm. to see the character development from like because they put Cassie Cage and Jackie Briggs at mm-hmm. like the forefront of the team leading the squad. Right. So it was cool to see the how. combat kids. Yeah, the com- mm-hmm. like seeing their characters come from that game, like their little rookies mm-hmm. getting training to them now taking the forefront and then like her working with Sonya Blade, her their parents like. Mm-hmm. It's like a, a father daughter or father daughter and then daughter father like mm-hmm. relationship between yeah. all four of them. So it was cool to see that kind of develop in their story arcs carry out. I'm at the very end now. I don't like if you're watching this, you probably either seen the story play online or whatever. But I'm at the very end, chapter twelve, and I thought it was funny that it, it was titled the last chapter's title, uh, "End of an Era," and you're playing with uh, Luke Kong, Kong Lao. Luke Kang. Luke Kang, Luke Kang. Yeah, Luke Are we Kang. spoiling this? No, I mean, can we? <laughs> we shouldn't be spoiling okay, anything. No, we're not spoiling the story. Okay, anyway, just. I'm, but so I'm, you're enjoying the storyline. I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying the storyline. It, it, it is well written storyline. When I was playing it, I, I found myself like when the story cuts are just like when it's just a story and you're not controlling anything. Mm-hmm. I was actually mm-hmm. invested mm-hmm. and I wanted to like see where this was carried out because when you're involving time travel and stuff like that, and Caboose, you mentioned it on your review, it can get yeah. a little timey wimey, especially trying to uh, like yeah. explain stuff. But I think they did a really good job of that because it, I, I, my mom was like watching a little bit, but she, I like, I feel like she would be able to kind of comprehend. To follow it. Yeah, follow yeah. it. She would be able to follow the storylines, how they set it up. So I think they did a really good job from a writing standpoint. I haven't got to play any of the crypt or anything like that mm-hmm. yet. And right. I've been like, not staying away from it, but just from how like how you talked about it, Caboose, I'm not just, I'm not eager to rush to that part of it yet. I want to finish the story I mode, play more online first, and then mm-hmm. I'll go into the crypt a little bit. But that's those are my initial yeah. impressions so yeah, far. Yeah, you definitely want to get a bunch of practice mm-hmm. in, so then you can face me and get destroyed. It's all good. I understand. <laughs> <Right. so. laughs> no, no, um, yeah, so I went to, sorry, I went to, I went online just yesterday just to be like, alright, let me test it out. And it was just without any training or anything. I just went online and, and yeah. played with uh, some of the characters I was familiar with from the story remote went online got my ass beat a couple times but thankfully i was playing against a couple people that had only played a few games so i was able to not lose as bad but it 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 was still like i need to get a little bit more practice and find my i still haven't found my main yet i think it's going to i think it might be luke kang or um i don't know sonya blade or johnny cage one of them three so Uh, right I really like Liu Kang a lot as well. There's a lot of characters that I'm playing. Noob Saibot's one of my favorites. But yeah, I totally agree with you. The story mode in Mortal Kombat 11 is so well done. It's Mm -hmm. really well written. And honestly, it's unheard of with fighting games 
to have a narrative like that. Most fighting games, they just want to focus on the fighting part. Mm -hmm. They want to focus on it being a balanced game with all these characters. And obviously, you know, they're going to run tournaments and do a lot of uh, a lot of esports related stuff. But Netherrealm, ever since Mortal Kombat 9, and honestly, since the 3D era of Mortal Kombat, they've been genuinely trying to focus on telling a cool narrative in the Mortal Kombat universe. And then, of course, what they've done with Injustice. And I love that. It is so cool to look into the lore of Mortal Kombat, you know, and the fact that it all started with like, what, six guys and barely a handful of characters from Mortal Kombat 1 to now they have this rich history with each and every character and they expand upon that in MK11 in the best way possible. Everyone gets a moment. There's a lot of characters in play and yeah you know the time travel stuff can get very tricky the fact that they're bringing characters from the past into the present it all can get a little weird and there are a couple of times throughout the story where i'm like well you've established that the way that this whole past and present thing works like this why isn't that establishment working in this cutscene? you yeah, know like ca oh, <laughs> caboose with, oh i know what you're talking about i got a question yeah. we'll talk about it after cool. okay yeah well, well without spoiling it the, the best way that i can describe it there's a cutscene in the game where you see the past version of a character get hit and then the future version of the character gets affected by that hit but then there's also a moment in the game where the past and present version of a character are fighting each other and it's like well future guy if you hit the past version of yourself aren't you just gonna hurt yourself so you know like time will, that you can nitpick time travel stuff like that all day long but to throw that aside it is a really good story and the crypt oh my goodness the crypt okay people have problem with problems with it because there's a little bit of a the the whole randomized thing with gear that you can unlock through the chest and stuff but throwing that aside from a design standpoint this is the best crypt that they've ever made. It's mm -hmm. straight up like third person. You're running through Shang Tsung's island. There's puzzles and new things to unlock and see. And there's secrets and stuff. Oh my! And and definitely, definitely, plenty of jump scares. Um, <laughs> I made the mistake of playing in the crypt with headphones on, and the very first jump scare happened. And man, I thought I was gonna have a heart attack. <laughs> it was crazy. Um, but yeah, there's there's a lot packed into this game. There's some controversy surrounding it right now that I don't know if I want to get into. You know, mm. there's people upset about the PC port, about the Switch port, which I think is on. It's fair, fair criticisms there, and I hope that NetherRealm and WB Games are listening and get to working on that. But um, but I think I think they packaged a really good game here, and I'm I'm overall very happy with it. How many hours is is the story mode? Would you guess just, estimate just about five? Just about five. Just hours. about five. So it's not too yeah. too long. And then, yeah. like, can you explain to someone who's a Mortal Kombat? Well, not noob, but like I haven't played any of the recent ones with mm -hmm. the crypt. How does that work in, in conjunction with the game? Is it just an right. area to build up like special attacks or special? Um, um, so the crypt is where you go to essentially find and unlock all the like cosmetics of the game, mm -hmm. you know, and, and even some of the stuff that will help your character get advantages, you know. So, for instance, if you're playing non-ranked modes, mm -hmm. you can apply an augment to your gear that will give it some sort of extra stat, whether that that could range from you earn extra coins at the end of a match or you do more damage with X move or something. Mm -hmm. um, so you can get stuff like that and you can get gear, skins, fatalities, you know, second fatalities that you can unlock for characters. You can unlock brutalities for characters, um, character intros, outros, all that stuff. The crypt is kind of your one-stop shop to get all the cool mm. customizable options available. And, and this is this where there's also microtransactions as well? No, actually. No. Okay. So so a lot of people were were saying and and this is maybe I should get into the controversy a little bit. So a lot of people are like, "Oh, this game really gears you towards spending money on the microtransactions." And even myself, I had thought that to be the case because with the review copy, um, we didn't have access to the in-game shop mm -hmm. just yet. Um, and that was worrying me because I was like, why are they not letting us see what this is? That would be kind of crucial to our review. But after having actually seen it, um, the in-game shop just lets you get – it's it's like every day it cycles through skins and stuff that you can get with – and it's all cosmetic. There is no pay to win. There's nothing in the shop that you can't really earn. on. And from what I can tell, 
you kind of get the currency required in the microtransactions at a decent enough pace to where I wasn't feeling like, oh, I can't get that skin because I don't have enough money to spend on the microtransactions. And at the end of the day, it has nothing to do with the game forcing you to spend your extra money on the microtransactions. Mm -hmm. It's just about the game forcing you to give up a lot of your time mm. because going through the towers of time and then swapping that with the crypt going back and forth back and forth it's a lot of hours that you have to put in and i understand that there could be some frustration there and i understand that that grind doesn't actually doesn't necessarily reward you in the way that most people would have hoped but i honestly in my personal opinion i've been having fun with it I've been liking going between Towers of Time and the Crypt. The Towers of Time is very difficult at times, and they are going to fix that. They have mentioned like, hey, we recognize this is way too difficult. You guys are not having fun with this. We're going to tone down the difficulty, and that's a great thing, and I appreciate that. But outside of that, I've never once had the urge to spend money on the mm -hmm. microtransactions. Even as me, who mm -hmm. loves Mortal Kombat, wants all the skins, loves the cool customization and everything in the gear system – I've never looked in the store, saw a skin that I liked and went, yeah, damn, I'm going to have to spend that extra money right now. <laughs> not once. Mm -hmm. Not once. So that's just – that's the way that I think of it. OK. Yeah. Um, so I, I saw that you know, it came out on what, Tuesday, right? And then yeah. I saw like it was on sale like 20 percent off uh, like really? yesterday. Yeah. I don't okay. know if that was like a real thing or not. I just seen it was like interesting to see, like maybe was that for maybe the Switch version or something? Maybe like because you said that there's something there's issues with the PC and Switch version. Yeah, I don't know if I heard. I I'll have to look into it. I don't know if I heard that the game was going twenty percent off, but I don't mm. see this as like a Fallout situation. No, you know no, no, no. I'm just I'm yeah. wondering if they had planned this ahead of time and been They're like, probably like, oh wait, people are spending more money on Avengers and game tickets. Let's give it, <laughs> let's give them a little discount just because they're spending they're like, a lot of like, money. Yeah, they're like, maybe it's not a good idea <laughs> to release. I mean, literally. I mean, even stuff like, you know how big Game of Thrones is. Even some yeah. of our Game of Thrones coverage has been buried this week because of, because of Avengers. Yeah, like there's certain Jeez. videos that would have gotten a lot more views, but because of Avengers, which we're covering obviously. Of course. Um here, right here. Mortal Kombat eleven already on sale for almost twenty percent off. Let me check what this is. Wow. That is crazy. That's a good deal. Twenty percent off I mean, see. yeah. Do it if you haven't got it yet. I don't know. I, I haven't heard about this. Yeah you can save ten dollars now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, ten dollars yeah, yeah, yeah. off. I'm looking at this article here as well. I, I think. Yeah, ten dollars right. off. That's cool. <laughs> that is. Uh, I guess it's in response to the uh, the the grindy towers of time. M maybe I, I don't know. Who's, that, yeah. that Caboose is, oh, sorry. I was just asking who's your who's been your favorite character to play with thus far. Um, right now I've been doing really well with sub zero, Okay. but like I, I have so many characters I've been playing as I cycle through Liu Kang, Kung Lao, Noob Saibot, uh, obviously sub zero. Um, I'm trying to think who else I also play as right now. Um, I do pretty well with Scorpion Baraka. I play a lot of because I played him from the beta. He was like my main character in the beta. Um, so yeah, I'm, I have like a decent amount that I'm cycling through, but I think the one that I always circle back to is Sub Zero. See, I just want to make this clear when we fight, y'all, y'all see that he said when I played the beta, your boy didn't get to play the beta. Caboose has been training for a minute now, so I'm like, <laughs> I I'm won't getting play my as Rocky a on. I played as the beta, then. I'm binging. Like, <laughs> I, I got to get my Rocky mode on and just like find my main because I still haven't found. It. I think, I think Johnny Cage might be it right now, but I'm, yeah. I'm so I've already and I've said it every time and I'm saying it again. They could have thrown in my boy. Kenji, like I, I'm and Raiden, I, I think Raiden might become a main because it seems like they've thrown in a couple of the same moves that that he had from mm. MKX. Because when I was like trying to some of the old stuff, like some of the the hits were still working, so I was like, all right, let me. This could be one of my mains because he's one of the more persons I'm familiar with. But yeah, I still have to. I still haven't played with the whole roster, so I got to find mine. And then once I find mine, I'll let you know, and then we can we can actually battle. Now you guys battle on Twitch, and then people can watch and see who the real. See the, no. who the real victor is. It's, It'll be me. 
Again, yeah. he's been playing for I'm not like saying a month. Right now. Okay, yeah, I'm like, not saying right now. Like, give me two oh, weeks. Give me two a, weeks. Cause I'm, a year from now. No, give me a week. Now, give me a week. Give me a week. Give me a week. I'm a fast learner. Yeah. Um, I had heard one of the criticisms was that there wasn't as many uh, options for fighters as they thought there was going to be. How many? How many fighters are available? Uh, mm. There's about 25 characters yeah. on the roster if you're including shot. I mean, that's that's the size of Injustice 2's base roster. Yeah. So. I guess I think, a lot of people were expecting a lot more or something like that. I don't know. Uh, the the thing is about having a massive roster is uh, people got to understand that, yes, NetherRealm wants to make a cool single-player game, and they want to give fans a really fun experience and pack in the roster as many fan favorites as possible. Mm-hmm. And they I think they really succeeded with that this time around. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, this is going to be an eSport. There's going to be a lot of people who play this game professionally. Mm-hmm. You can't have like 30 or 40 characters on the roster at launch because that's impossible to balance. Mm -hmm. You you never know how many characters are going to be way better than others. You know, no matter how much they test day in, day out, you never know when the pros get their hands on the game, how they're going to be able to find an exploit with a character or find something that allows this character to do way more damage, you know. So it's all about balancing. And to do that, you have to make sure that the roster size is healthy enough to where there's a good amount of characters, but there isn't, like, a crazy amount at launch. Yeah, it's it's not my complaint. I, I come from the old school where, like, you yeah. know, Street Fighter like is, you know, <laughs> the original Street Fighter, I think, was eight fighters total. Right. And then right. later with, like, uh, Championship Edition, they expanded it to 12 so and then after that, like it got too much. Once they start doing like all these, I mean, freaking the the Marvel versus Capcom games is mm-hmm. like a bazillion characters. In there. Right, yeah. right. Um, and yeah, you're right because when you start getting too many characters, then it's very hard to balance them because they all have to have different moves, different powers, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. So yeah, uh, Mortal Kombat 11. Well, I think we'll, you know, you've been posting some guides. I'm sure you'll have yeah. some more tips and stuff on, on on the channel as well. So let's move on to Days Gone By. This is a, a Sony. Days ex- Gone. Day, days, mm-hmm. gone, days Gone. Days yeah. Gone. Right? Why, yeah. why do I have Days Gone By? Yeah, Days Gone. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know why I have Days Gone By. Um, <laughs> must be like a movie or something like that. Um, it's a Sony exclusive. Yeah. Uh, it's. Uh, Sam Witwer plays the, or he voices the main character. Sam Witwer, who you know from. Wait, oh damn! So I did not even put that two and two together because I was like, he looks from like he looks familiar. Oh, that makes sense. All right, mind blown. Yeah. All right. Um, so both of you guys played it. I saw, I saw your review, uh, Caboose, where you said it was a good game, not a great game. Um, yeah. What's your take on it so far, Dorian? I'm I'm in the middle. I'm like, good game, not a great game. I'm whelmed. That's that's <laughs> that's basically how I feel. Yeah. But I, I agree with what Caboose was saying. And I, while I was playing this and Mortal Kombat like at the same time, because uh-huh. I, I got the codes around the same time, so I was trying to play them back and forth. And I found myself wanting to play more Mortal Kombat. I know they're not they're two whole different games, complete genre, different genres. But I was playing more MK. But what from what I did play of Days Gone, I thought it was all right from because I I just felt like. It got a, a not, I guess it got a, a bit repetitive in my opinion. Mm-hmm. The story mode, I like from where I'm at, Caboose is it was basically I just killed another group and he was like, All right, I think you're like the his brother is almost ready to go, like his arm is finally like healed up or something. But I felt like yeah. it was me doing the same missions, like going, uh, it was like somebody's camping out, go, go to that horde. There's like seven or eight people, mm-hmm. you got to kill them, sneakily take them down or whatever. So I, I've been doing that, and that's pretty much where I'm at in the game so far. But I've, I personally, I think the, the, the combat, I know, I, I don't know if you said you had a complaint about the combat. Or whatever but i thought it was it was fine because it kind of reminded me i thought it was interesting we because we were playing world war z like Mm -hmm. fighting zombies and stuff like that like i i I thought it was in a similar vein of that but i enjoyed the fighting and the because it kind of it was like john wickish him like rolling and stuff Mm -hmm. like trying to kill people so john wickish meets zombies but um huh no, go go ahead. I was just I was I said yeah. Oh yeah. So <laughs> but agreeing. that's yeah, yeah. uh that's that's kind of how I feel about it right now. I'm just whelmed. I maybe maybe and once I the like the story. I think there were some criticisms that the story wasn't as engaging as they thought it was going to be. Yeah. yeah. That's that's for me at least. Like uh, the the this game does something 
you've played The Last of Us. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know how that game starts. This game tries to get you the way that The Last of Us does. Obviously not exactly the same, but I kind of felt like, oh, okay, they're trying to do what they did, like what 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 happened, what Naughty Dog would, did with The Last of Us, where the opening minutes, you're just immediately sucked into the world. But the problem is, like, everything is so quick, and there isn't enough time to really digest what is going on, whereas at least in The Last of Us, you're going through that opening, like that prologue of the game over quite a long period of time and enough for you to really take in what's going on and what's what the surroundings are like whereas in days gone it's like five minutes here's these characters you care about them right you love them right something happens here are you sad yes you're sad and then they they throw you into the game and it's like i have no time to sit back and be like oh okay here's the character motivation here's what they're supposed to be feeling this is the emotion that i'm feeling in response to that i don't have any of that time and because of that i felt the rest of the game suffered for it in terms of story and my attachment to the character. I think Sam Whitworth does a great job as uh, as Deacon. I think he's a good character and holy smokes it looks exactly like Sam Whitworth. Um but outside of that I just I wasn't too blown away with the story as I thought it would be. You know, in this recent lineup of PlayStation exclusives, I was hoping this to be that next hit, but it just wasn't there for me. I think it's it's fine. It's okay. Um, gameplay's a little clunky, but once you turn on the snap to aim option mm-hmm. in the settings, it felt a lot better, felt a lot easier for me. Um, and the photo mode is something I can 100% praise. I love photo mode in video games. That is one of my favorite features that they've been starting to add in these single player games. And this is the best photo mode has ever been in any game ever. It's so detailed. If you're like a photographer or if you love editing and messing mm-hmm. around with photos and stuff, Oh my goodness, the amount of hours you're going to sink into this game's photo mode is going to be endless. It's it's so much fun. And just that alone will keep me occupied for quite a long time. So if you were asking someone like me, like, hey, should I buy this game? And you told me there's a photo mode and it's incredibly detailed, I'd probably go out and buy it for that reason. And this is exactly what I would have wanted out of a photo mode for a game. So I can praise it there. Not so much in the other categories, though. I th- oh, okay. Like, Caboose, I think that like that's what I was missing in the back of my head. I think you hit it on the nail on the head. It was like they get you into the, the story just like you're, like, playing, like, super quick. You're not, like, in, super invested into the characters themselves. Yeah. That's why it's – oh, uh, like, I, I okay, I, I see what you're saying. I, it, how, how many hours uh, – did you finish it, Caboose, or are you still working on the – uh, I was I was pretty close, I think, towards the end. I sunk in quite a bit of hours. I don't really know exactly okay. how much, but, like, it's enough. Like okay. it's, it, it doesn't feel too short for me. It yeah. just feels a little repetitive. I just remember when we saw the demo at E3 last year uh, at the Sony booth. Everyone was just joking. Hey, is that Last of Us Part Two? You yeah. I mean? Like, <laughs> like yeah. just because it, it, it just gave off that bo- vibe that that's what it kind of wanted to be, um, and it seems like it like. Uh, doesn't hit the levels that 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 people expect out of. Uh, I mean, I mean that's a good thing, right? I mean, if people are expecting the best from these Sony uh, exclusives, mm-hmm. that you know, if this one's like, whether it's like mediocre or above average, and it's just yeah. not great, mm-hmm. you know, that's uh, right. not, not a bad thing to have. Right, and I don't want to compare it like, oh, it should have been Spider Man or it mm-hmm. should have been God of War. It's a different developer. It's a different studio. Um, but it's just, you know, uh, it, it was just strictly on the perspective of PlayStation has been hitting a lot of home runs in the studios that they put faith in to release exclusives on their platform for. So I thought that Days Gone was next up in line to fit that mm-hmm. bill. It just didn't reach exactly that for me. Hmm. I don't think it's bad by any means, though. I mean, there was a couple of people in the comments like, oh, you hated it. No. No, no, no. Well, if you don't Nothing think something's the best ever, then you, you hated it. That's, uh, I know, I know. Like, I think it's just fine, yeah. and that's it. Yeah. All right, uh, let's move on to the next topic. Uh, Fortnite, obviously uh, the yeah. biggest game going on right now, had Avengers Endgame tie-in uh, where they had uh, the ability to pick up weapons uh, from uh, the Avengers cast. I saw, like... Uh, you know, you could pick up Iron Man's uh, gloves, yeah, yeah, and use those to kind of uh, 
fight people. Uh, you could get. Uh, Does he get Stormbreaker? Yeah, that one was my favorite one. Stormbreaker was my favorite one. Stormbreaker's cool. And then yeah. they also had like Hawkeye's bow and arrow. You could use the 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 bow and arrow to like get around. Oh, like like, you, like a like a grappling hook style. You can also yep. attack people as well. Uh, what else did they have? They had cap shield. Cap shield. Yeah, that was that was pretty cool. Throwing that around. Um, did you get a chance to play this at all, Caboose? I did. I was at, just before we got on the podcast. Okay. I was actually just playing it. It's a really fun mode. Mm-hmm. So, the way it works is there's two teams, and I think it's like thirty v thirty or something mm-hmm. like that. There's there's quite a bit of players on both sides, and the way that it works is if you're on the villains team, you play as the Chitari, you know, the the aliens mm-hmm. from Avengers mm-hmm. One, um, and then. If you're on the heroes team, you just play as whatever skin that you have selected in Fortnite, and then you can go and find those mythic items. It's either Hawkeye's bow, Stormbreaker, Gauntlets, or Captain America's shield. You can get all four if mm-hmm. you could, like if you find them, but mm-hmm. it's pretty difficult. You know, there's not a lot of chests out there, um, and it's it's yeah, it's a lot of fun. So throughout the match, the Infinity Stones will crash down onto the map, mm-hmm. and the Chitari have to go and collect the stones. And the first person to collect a stone becomes Thanos. Uh, then you have, yeah, then you have all the powers that Thanos had, all the abilities that Thanos had from the original Avengers crossover in Infinity War. So if you remember how Thanos played back then, all the same rules apply. Um, and if you collect all six Infinity Stones, then the opposing team, the heroes, if you will, will run out of extra lives. So whatever players are left, is the amount of players that are left in the game. Mm. For the Chitauri, the way that it works is I think they have like 100 lives, and as the heroes, you have to just kill as many of them as possible until their lives are depleted, and then they have no more respawns left, and then you take them out and win the game. You gotta protect, obviously, mm. the Infinity Stones, make sure that they don't collect them. It's a, it's really fun, and when, when the circle closes in, and everyone in the game is in this tiny little space, it gets so hectic, but I really enjoyed it, and I mean, hats off to Epic Games for doing something crazy like this to see the Avengers items and to see the Chitauri and Thanos in Fortnite is crazy. And I, I loved every second of it. Nice. Man, I wish I wasn't yeah. trash. Like, I would be playing it right now. But... Trust me, you would still even have fun. Even if you're not very good at the game, you would still have fun. No, I but guarantee you. I'm, like, not very good. Not It's not, not that I'm not very good. I am literal trash. Like, you, you <laughs> throw me into that game, it's just going to be, like, me dying. So, I don't know, man. They need to do it for Apex Legends or something. I'd be up in that hope. Yeah, but, get uh, a Fortnite and but Apex yeah, I, 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 I'll, I'm going to download it and, and give it a try. I'm not the very best, but no yeah. one ever was. Yeah. Yeah, train right. them is my real quest. To train them is yeah, my call. I, I knew you were gonna do that. And then and then they got they got a Black Widow skin in the game as well that you can buy in the in-game shop right now. So that's pretty cool. Cool. All right. Yeah. Uh, before we move on, everyone knows we talked about Avengers Endgame. It came out uh, yeah. today. A lot of people saw it last night. Yeah, uh, I've seen it twice already. Oh damn. Yeah, I saw it uh, on Monday at the premiere, and then I watched uh, on uh, media screen. On Tuesday, I loved it. Mm-hmm. If you want to check out the reviews, we have a non-spoiler review on mm-hmm. the Collider Videos channel. We also have a spoiler review that we did that has all the spoilers. But I kind of wanted to talk to Caboose and Dorian and get their non-spoiler kind of thoughts on, yeah. on it. Because I know both of you guys are big MCU fans. How did yeah. it live up to the expectations? Uh, I mean, Caboose, go for it. Sure, sure. I'll, I'll basically I'll start off and I'll just say what I said in my initial tweet when I got out of the theater. It's eleven years, mm-hmm. twenty-two movies, thousands of people all working towards Avengers Endgame to make this work, and they pulled it off. Yeah, they did it. it they it, it it is everything I wanted it to be. I am as a Marvel fan not just of this franchise of films, but the characters, this film was like my wildest dreams come true. And the last hour, no spoilers, but the last hour of the movie is incredible. It is just my theater. We're, listen, Canadians, we don't really go too crazy. We, 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 we keep it calm in mm-hmm. our theaters. We enjoy our, our theater experience and walk out and that's it. My theater was 
roaring like a rock concert, screaming during the final act and all the craziness that ensues. Oh my goodness. It was amazing. I loved it. I love as well the performances. Robert Downey Jr., this is his best work as Tony Stark and Iron Man, bar none. Chris Evans, best work as Captain America, bar none. Everyone does such a good job in this movie. I'm just, I'm so happy. I'm so happy that it was good. Yes. Because th- th- this is the highest my expectations have ever been for a movie. And for it to even be remotely okay is something that was damn near impossible. So for me to think it was great is something that I am just, I'm just beside myself about. Yeah, they definitely yep. delivered. I yeah. mean, the expectations were very, very high, and I think they met those expectations. No, yeah. Agreed. I, Which was just tough. Dorian? Yeah, it was. it's probably my favorite Marvel movie thus far, and I got I want to see it again. I'm probably going to see it again this weekend, yeah. but it was just, Caboose, you can probably agree. It's just, I talked about this on Mailbag as well. It just me, like, I was 12 or 11 when the MCU started, and to be yep. here, like, as an adult, and just to be able to, to see early screening, I'm just humbled by that, but to be here like if you would have told if i would be able to tell like my 12 year old self like hey all your favorite characters are going to be together on the big screen like just wait and that now that we're finally here and like the the payoff like the investment of all these years that we have all put in it 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 just like feels like they i can't believe they actually pulled it off like you said caboose it's just something so special just it blew me away from start to finish and yeah it wasn't as like Action heavy as Infinity War, but the the what the, the story itself, the dialogue, the the characters, the scene, all of them work together. It, it just blew me away, and I agree with you. The 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 performances across the board, they're the the it feels like they actually completed their story arcs. No spoiling it or anything, but like the original six characters, it feels like all the investment that we put in with those characters paid off in the end. And I'm just grateful. Kevin Feige deserves an Oscar. He deserves every award in the book. Him and his team deserve like. A, a special award just for how they were able to pull off something of such magnitude, and I'm I'm grateful that I got to experience it firsthand. Yeah, aside from uh, watching the movie itself, but my sec- second highlight of of that evening was we got to take a picture. Me, Mark, that, Perry, yeah. got to take a picture with uh, Kevin Feige, the goat, the yeah, legend. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. awesome. The, the guy who who brought it all together. But you're like, oh, you know, you've been waiting since you've been tw- 12 or whatever. I'm like, dude, think about me. When yeah. I was a kid, I was like, there were no superhero movies. Like, there was like Batman was it, and it was the one good one, and then the rest were like all crappy. And I never <laughs> thought we'd actually see the day that these characters would get on to like I never thought like th- like Spider-Man I could see right like mm-hmm. Spider-Man is a huge character okay right. I could see him getting onto the big screen um you know obviously we have the Superman the Batman never thought first of all Iron Man was he was a B-level character in the comic books almost all the Avengers were oh, yeah. B-level characters oh uh, yeah. yeah I mean Hulk was an A-level character right um but like to see something like this actually and Thanos and like I read the Infinity Gauntlet when I was in high school and so <laughs> Like that's like to see that. Like I never imagined they would ever, ever, ever make a live action movie. Maybe an animated, but I never imagined a live action where like they actually put money into it. Good actors, good. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like because mm-hmm. that was the problem back in the day. Was like no one wanted to put any effort into them. They're like, oh, what's this? Okay, here let's just make a a cheapo crappy version of it you know yeah and not until the 2000s did they start being like oh we can make money off of this and then they started to invest the time that the money and the the talent Mm -hmm. into it right and so yeah for me just watching that was like oh oh my god and just for me like the whole i was worried going into endgame thinking oh maybe uh a lot of the stuff in infinity war doesn't matter Mm mm-hmm they're gonna make it like uh, whatever, but it made everything matter. It made every oh, a yeah. ton of stuff matter in all the previous MCU movies. So, you, you feel the impact of Infinity War in Endgame. Yes, and and just like what you were just saying there, um, I think one thing that I notice about Endgame is it's not just like the end of the Avengers movies. It's not the final act mm-hmm. of this trilogy or quadrilogy, whatever you want to call it, of Avengers films. No, this mm-hmm. is the final act that was the long running series of everything in the MCU yeah. it it all 
is brought to a head yeah. in Avengers Endgame. So apparently yeah. all three of us really, really liked it. Loved it. Yeah, it, I loved it as well. <laughs> <laughs> loved it as well. I'm Support gonna, your indie, uh, local yeah, indie films, yeah, guys. Yeah, I'm exactly. Gonna, yeah, I'm going to go check it out uh, again, hopefully sometime in the next week. All right. Hey, uh, let's go see it while I'm in town. Maybe. Oh. Maybe. Yeah. I, I, got a, yeah. I got an A-list. Uh, I don't know. You guys have a- AMC up there? Uh, we do, but we don't have like some of the things that you guys do. But you don't have A-list? I don't think so. No, a list is that the thing where you subscribe. I, I pay twenty bucks a month, and then I can, or maybe it's twenty five. Right, remember. right, right. And you can see a certain amount of movies. I can see three movies month. a week. Right. Yeah. And no, so, we wish we had something like okay. that. Okay. Well, yeah. let's work it out. When you get down here, let's try and do like a Avengers Endgame screening together. Sure. Cool. Yeah, yeah sounds good. Um, all right, let's move on. Uh, we talked about this last week, but it's just a little follow up with World War Z. Uh, you you reviewed the, the the game last week. We talked a mm-hmm. little bit about that. Then after our podcast, we had like a Twitch session. Mm-hmm. Played like two yeah. uh, two hours on it. I had a blast playing that game. I Same it, here. it was. I don't know. It's, it definitely. It definitely is that third person left for dead. Like, there's no story that we were making fun of. Like all the voice acting, we're like, the, dude, it's like one voice actor like doing all the different accents, <laughs> you know? Because like they have yeah. like a Russian, they have a uh, uh, Jerusalem, they have uh, uh, where else? Uh, Japan. It was like, you know, th- those are just fun. F- they're fun to go into, but there's like no real story, no nothing. All it is right. is killing. Zombies and lots and lots yeah. of zombies. And I, tr- I I tried to play it alone, <laughs> like tried to just play it like just by myself, like with other like random people. Yeah. Online. It's not nearly as fun, nor or it's still fun, but it's still, not a, yeah. not as fun as like when we were actually us three like playing together, like on the mics and stuff, yeah. having fun. I thought I I enjoyed it a lot more that way. Yeah, yeah. When your friends would be like, hey, get that, get that, hey, give me that, because you're like willing to help you, like, hey, heal yeah. me, heal me. Oh, get him off me! Get him off me, or whatever you know. Yeah, it's 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 a lot, it's a lot more fun, like group grouping. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, you can have so many more hours of entertainment playing with a bunch of people, and yeah, those two hours went by quick. Yeah. It was we funny. The, yeah, it was funny the whole time. If, uh, if I don't, I think it's saved, and I don't know if we'll put it up or whatever. But yeah, just I saw whole, it's on Twitch. Just the whole time, like the bot. The, yeah, the 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 yeah. big the big zombie, whatever. Every time was going for a caboose, like <laughs> yes, oh, every Lord. time. <laughs> Every the time, the charger just kept taking me down. <laughs> like I could be crazy. standing right next to Caboose, and it, they would be like, "No, nope, there, yeah. there he is." Let me, well, let I me. mentioned it on the on our feed. I was like, "I feel so useful now because like I'm so useless on Apex with Caboose. Caboose is like carrying the whole team." And in in in, in, in World War Z, I'm like, I'm saving Caboose. I'm killing zombies. Pretty I'm like, much, yeah. I'm like putting in work, man. So yeah. that I think we, we definitely should. Useful. Yeah, I think we definitely we should have another uh, World War Z session. It's such a it's such made for like a Twitch stream, you know. I mean, yeah. like a, a co-op thing. We should play. I think we should up our level, though. Like the the difficulty the level. Difficulty, mm-hmm. yes. Yeah, we yeah, had I it agree. on pretty easy, and it was like it was still fun, but it was a little too easy. So I think if we put on like another a, a notch above, yeah, I think. And, we'll, and then, I wonder, yeah, I wonder how hectic it can get at yeah. like the harder difficulties. I'm wondering yeah. if they actually are going to add zombies because they already have a ton. I'm wondering if they're just making them harder to kill because right now it's like you can kill them fairly easily. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. two or three shots. Yeah. But I do like like you, you hit them in different body parts and like you that know, limb or whatever falls off. They yeah. pop off. Yeah. The, throwing the grenades like in a big horde of them and then just blowing up and flying everywhere. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, uh, yeah, I think we should uh, look, we should uh, set up another time to do that again. Yeah. All yeah, right, uh, next one, we've got game sales. So look at this game sales. So I'm going to have to make like an apology to the, the Kingdom Hearts 3 fans. <laughs> uh, because I had mentioned before that uh, Anthem, I thought Anthem was the first AAA title. And that was like maybe a week or two after Kingdom Hearts 3 had come out. And right. Kingdom Hearts 3 actually, according to this article... Is sti- is the number one uh, seller for the year so far? Wow! Oh, yeah, damn. over even Anthem. I think Anthem would have been the number one it had it uh, gotten better reviews and and you know didn't have all the issues that people were complaining about. Uh, yeah, if it wasn't like a complete disaster of a launch and everything. Yeah, yeah, like the whole like three different weeks that it launched. You know, like just give me one launch date, man. Um, yeah. But so that uh, let me see if I can, where is it. 
So it's the number one seller of the year so far. We've had four last month, March. They had uh, the Division Two at number one. Secure Shadows Die Twice at number two. MLB 19, the show, number three. Devil May Cry nice. 5 at number four. Smash Brothers Ultimate, number five. Red Dead Redemption 2, man, still up there. Yeah. And number Same with Smash Bros. Six. I, I'm surprised that's still yeah. up there, too. NBA 2K 19-7, Grand Theft Auto 5 at 9. Wow. Uh, okay, at number 8. Uh, 9, Yoshi's uh, Crafted World. 10, Call yep. of Duty Black Ops 4. Yeah, this is for March. But for 2018, Kingdom Hearts 3 is number 1. Tom Clancy's Division 2 is number 2. Anthem's number 3. Resident Evil 2 is number 4. Red Dead Redemption is number 5 still. Um yes. Jump Force is number six. Smash Brothers Ultimate is number seven. Secure Shadow Dies Twice is number eight. Call of Duty Black Ops 4 is nine. And New Super Mario Brothers U Deluxe is number 10. That's for all of 2019 so far. So If I was Red Dead wow. Redemption 2, I'd be like putting a, a petition and be like, hey, can we be considered for Game of the Year this year yeah. if our, our <laughs> workers are still killing this bad? I'm, I'm really surprised that Red Dead's still so high up there because the online is like, dead yeah. <laughs> so i guess a lot of people are still wanting to experience the story which is great but um yeah these numbers are crazy i that i mean the more that i think about it it makes sense that kingdom hearts 3 is the highest seller mm-hmm. of the year so far um i am surprised though that anthem is as high up as it is um because i did i remember hearing that yes anthem didn't make the sales numbers that they had hoped for mm-hmm. but it was still doing pretty well mm-hmm. in terms of sales so that's really interesting. Smash Brothers being also up there, uh, that's really cool. I know that they recently released uh, Joker mm-hmm. as the next like DLC character from Persona Five. So, yeah, this this all sounds good. I'm surprised Jump Force, or I'm I'm pleasant, six? pleasantly surprised Jump Force is holding up because yeah. it's it didn't yeah. get, it got mixed reviews. I personally loved it. I mm-hmm. haven't played it as much anymore, but I'm glad it's it's doing doing a little well. Yeah, too many yeah. too many games, man. So many There's games. a lot of games that came out in these first three months. Yeah, all yeah. right. Let's move on to Twitter questions. What do you got, Dorian? All right. The Amazing Web asks, what is one of your favorite games that most people might not know about? Mine is Tech and the Power of Juju. Okay. Oh, wow. I don't even know what that game is. Yeah, me neither. Um, um, for me, I mean, there are two games that people know about. They're just not as widely considered. Like Alan Wake is one of my favorite games. Okay. Uh, and then I've mentioned this before, and this is more for, I think, older people. <laughs> uh, Gabriel Knight, that series, it's one, two, and three, and they're all, it's weird. All three of them are uh, adventure games, you know, like story based okay. and you, puzzles and dialogue, and, and but they're all three of them are, are different formats. Like, it's weird. Like, the first one's like this 2D. Uh, Action event or adventure game, and the second one is people have no clue what this is, but it's like a full motion video game. And this is like back in the day where it's like, like before technology was this good, Mm -hmm. the graphics they would like record, like literally record, like shoot actors acting out stuff. Wait, what do you mean? Like almost like it would be like live action, live action, okay, okay. and and then put it in the game so you would, uh. Yeah, you would uh, you actually pl- like play something, and then they would play a clip. <laughs> like oh. that's cool. Yeah, Damn. So, <laughs> there's no reason to do it now because you have such good you know graphics or yeah. whatnot. So, yeah. um, and then the third one was like a 3D like yeah, and this is like when 3D was first starting to 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 come out. So that's my two that I can think of. Hmm, what about you, Caboose? Oh, this is a tough one for me. I, yeah. Th- the, the way that I think about it is, like, there are games that maybe some people don't know about, it, but I'm pretty sure still pretty popular. Like, instantly in my mind, I think of something like Skate and Skate 2 and Skate 3. Those games were still pretty big. Or was there a Skate 3? Or, or, yeah, I think it's Skate 4 that people didn't, didn't get. Um, those games are still pretty popular. I just don't know if a lot of people know about them. But I just remember really enjoying those games. They were, they were so much fun. And the controls and the way that you could do the different tricks and stuff on the skateboard i thought was really creative 
Um, but I, I think those games are still popular. So I don't know. That, that's a tough question. Yeah. Especially because I'm still young. Yeah. So. I, I, like, I don't know. For some reason, my, I instantly thought of Beautiful Joe. But I feel like that's a very popular. Uh, right. Yeah. I, I don't I mean, know. And also, yeah, yeah. I don't know. That's that's probably mine. Um, hmm. Yeah. We'll, we'll come back to you next question. week. We'll, we'll, we'll think yeah. about it. We'll sit on that one. All Let's right. Let's think on that one. Yeah. Email Joh- Johansson asked, could Insomniac do more games like Spider-Man that are sort of like sequels, and what would you like to see? What do you mean by sequels? Uh, yeah. Hmm. I mean, they are working on Spider-Man 2, so... And I, I wonder if he means something like uh, Marvel Games Universe kind of thing. Um, so I'll, I'll answer both. I'll answer both interpretations of the question, if you will. So for one... Do I think that they can make more games as in like more games in the Marvel universe that are connected? Absolutely. But I don't think that they will. Uh, And I would love to see them, though. I would love to see Insomniac's take on like an Iron Man Mm -hmm. or a Captain America game. Um, And then on the second interpretation, if he's saying, do I think that they'll make more Spider-Man games? Mm -hmm. 100%. (laughs) They're working on a Spider-Man 2. Let's call it all but confirmed at this point so yeah i both i'm not entirely sure what the what the interpretation of the the question was but to give both answers yes and yes (laughs) fair enough fair enough all right at this is a complicated at name at d s j g i o d s j g i o d s ask (laughs) what is the secret to making a game that gets so many good reviews as as god of war 2 did (laughs) make Uh a good well, I mean, it's, it's the same with movies, right? Like, yeah. there's no sure-proof formula. There is no, like, 100%, like, if you do this every time, you will make a ga- great game or great movie. But yeah. there are tons of stuff that you can do to help ensure that. Uh, obviously, I think, mo- I mean, obviously money is one of the things that you need, but... Besides money, time, I think the more time you have, because, you know, you've seen indie developers, like, they don't have a ton of money, and right. they're make, they make really cool games. They they don't have yeah. the big budgets, and they're not going to have all these you know, awesome graphics or whatever, but it, they, they can focus on the gameplay and the story or whatever they're choosing to do. So I think time, having enough time to do it, and then also the talent. I mean, talent is, you know, more important. That's why people both in the movies and video games world, they're like, they seek out like, oh, people who have proven track records of yeah. like either as writers or producers or developers or et cetera, et cetera. And in case of movies, actors. Um, so I think that's another thing. That's the blend. Yeah. But I think as well, you know, like you have to, and I mean, it sounds obvious, but like you have to have the passion mm-hmm. for what you're doing. If you don't love what you are creating, if you can't sit here and give me that elevator pitch on what it is that this game is about and why you love working on it so much, that must mean that you're just not proud of the work. And that can unfortunately mean that maybe the work just isn't as good as you had hoped it to be. So having that passion, that drive um, is always a good thing to see. That's why, you know, Insomniac so sincerely delivered on Spider-Man because you can tell each and every one of them at the core loved the character Mm -hmm. they loved spider-man they read the comic books they understood who this character was and the values of that character and that's why spider-man ended up being as good as it did because after they got that out of the way after they got their passion and understanding of the ideology ideologies wow that's a hard word to say (laughs) well after they got the idea of spider-man right they just had to focus on let's get a good story Let's get good gameplay, and all the puzzle pieces will fall into place. And that's that's kind of video games, any form of art. That's kind of how it works. I feel you. I feel you. All right, we got the last question of the day. It's from Grayson. He asked, what is a game that is over a decade old that still holds up? Hmm, a decade Ooh. old. What, do, what year is it right now? <laughs> 2019. I think immediately what comes to mind. Let me uh, Google yeah. the date. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure Batman Arkham Asylum, yeah, 2009. So Batman Arkham Asylum, August 2009. So it's coming up on its uh, on its 10th birthday. So I'd say that. That game definitely still holds up. It is 
so damn good. I mean, and hey, Infamous came out 2009. There you go. That one holds yeah, up. Infamous Infamous still does hold up as well. That that is a fun game to play. I agree. And then um I agree. It, oh Uncharted 2, they did a remastered version, so I guess I technically count. Right. I played the remastered version. No, so, that's still uh, I mean so, the original came yeah, out. Yeah, so that counts. Whenever, you know. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's tough in terms of like holds up graphic wise, none of them are going to hold up, right? Because, right, right. Cuz just graphics keep getting better and better. Um, like I said, I even played a, I was playing Witcher three the other day and I was like, and that was, that's this generation. And I'm like, this looks dated. Like <laughs> I was like, literally like, cause I was comparing it to both Assassin's Creed Odyssey and, and, uh, Red Dead Redemption two, which are gorgeous right. looking games. And I'm sure Witcher three, when it came out was like top of the line, but it was like, even just being, what was like three years old now? Like, it's like, Oh, this looks Kind of dated. So graphic wise, yeah. I mean, the first Halo to me always holds up. That was it was just a blast to play. Oh yeah. Um, if you play that. An- another game. Another game that I thought of. I mean, it's not the best game, but I still think you can get some good enjoyment out of it today. Is Star Wars Force Unleashed? Okay. I think that game is pretty fun. I I enjoyed it. Sam Sam Witwer yeah. is in that game. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I think that game's pretty fun. There's there's a lot of games still um, that hold 50 up. Fifty Cent day. Blood on the Sand <laughs> came out 2009. I, I bet that still holds up. <laughs> Oh boy! Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, game of the year. Yeah, like like <laughs> Fallout Three was two thousand eight. I think that still holds up. But wow. I mean, I bet I mean graphics wise, it doesn't. You know what I mean? Like, you, there are most games in terms of graphics from over ten years ago are yes. look dated. There's just no way to avoid that. Um, yeah. But from a gameplay standpoint, those are all good games. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, that's it. Yep. All right. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Uh, thanks to the people joining me at uh, the table and through Skype today. Dorian, where can people find yes. you? You guys know you can find me on Twitter at Dorian Parks and Rec because Parks and Rec is better than The Office. And you can find me on Instagram at Dorian Parks. And Kaboot, you're going to be with us next week, right? I think we'll That's record because right. we'll, we'll I think you're leaving Friday morning, right? Yes, yes, so yes. So I think let's try and record a podcast on Thursday when you're here. Sure. Yeah, All so right. you, you, guys can, you guys can find me online at... Uh, on Twitter and Instagram at Caboose EK, and then right here on Collider Games, I will be there next nice. week. Nice. And you guys can find yeah. me on Twitter at Think Hero or Instagram Dennis.TZNG. Make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Collider Games. We're also on the Collider Factory podcast feed mm-hmm. every single week. So until next time, see you guys later.